any viewers. So today is part one of my May 2015 favorites and let's just get started and to let you know if I mention a movie, TV show, game, whatever, the link to the trailer will be in the description box down below so you can check it out with ease. So let's get started. The book I've enjoyed these past couple weeks has been After Dark by Haruki Murakami, which most of you know by now, I'm a huge Murakami fan. And After Dark is just like, it's very strange because basically the narrator is you and you're reading this and it's just about like three different groups of people and you follow them throughout a night in, is it Tokyo? Yeah, Tokyo. And you just see what happens and it's kind of voyeuristic in a way but it's very fascinating. I really like it. I'm about halfway through it and it's really good. It's very, it's a very quick read. Like you'll thumb through the pages like one after the other trying to just to see what happens next and that's one thing I love about Murakami's work because he just makes such compelling stories and they're just so fascinating and voyeuristic and amazing and I just love Haruki Murakami so if you haven't read any of his any of his novels this one's one you can start with to read I would say it's pretty simple to read but I really enjoy it so definitely check out After Dark by Haruki Murakami and that's all for books and stuff this month. So let's move on to movies. The only own one that I'm going to mention, so I'll go with that first. And that is Satoshi Kon's Tokyo Godfathers. Now, I'm a huge Satoshi Kon fan. And I'm so sad that he passed away and he can't make any more works. But Tokyo Godfathers is about this group of three homeless people. One's a man who has had a dark past. One's a teenage girl who has run away from home. And the other is a transgender man. And, you know, one day they're going through a dump looking just for stuff they can use. And they hear a crying. And they're like, "What? where's that coming from? What is that? They look, there's a baby in the dump. So they quickly get this baby and they're trying to find the mother. And it's a very touching, emotional story about these three misfits and a baby in Tokyo. And yes, this movie is in Japanese. You will have to read English subtitles. But after a while, you don't notice it. It's just like, it's second nature. And it's such a beautiful film. You need to see it if you haven't seen this. Every Satoshi Kon film is amazing and has its own great qualities in their own unique way. And Tokyo Godfathers is probably his most lighthearted work he created. I mean, this is funny. This has a lot of humor in it. Most of his work is very dark. This is very lighthearted and emotional and definitely worth watching. Yes, you have to read subtitles, like I said, but it's worth it for this amazing masterpiece. It's worth it. More movies I enjoyed have been Unbroken, which is the true life story of Louis Zamperini. He was an Olympic... Was he a gold medalist? Can't remember. He's in the Olympics, and then he... He joined World War II as a soldier, he survives a plane crash, only to become a Japanese POW. It's a very emotional story, it's very fascinating to see his life. It's also very sad because he died two months before the film was released, but he did get to see the film. It's just sad that he died right before the film was released. But he's such an amazing man, he was amazing, and it was it's an amazing film. Angelina Jolie did a great job directing. The actors were all phenomenal. It was just such a good movie. Even if you don't usually enjoy like war movies, this isn't a war movie in that sense. It's more about the emotional and psychological effects of what has happened to this man, how he has become a survivor, and that's what I loved about Unbroken. So I definitely recommend watching it. Another movie which I just recently saw, so, so, so a lot of you are going to be like, oh, why haven't you seen that yet? Why didn't you see that before? It was Mad Max. Now, Mad Max, most of you know, is the story of Max Rokotansky. They're in the Australian wastelands. And these films aren't known for having a lot of dialogue. It's just a lot of vehicular carnage and shootouts and stuff. Which, Mad Max is the origin story of Max and his family. And I'm not going to say what happens, just in case you haven't seen it like me. Like I hadn't seen it before I saw it recently. You get my drift. It's great if you like action films. It is emotional. That's all I'm going to say. Emotional. Mel Gibson was great back then. He was actually pretty good looking back then. That was way back in the day though. But Mad Max is definitely worth a watch if you're into action movies because it's so badass. It's another true life retelling of a true life story. 
in a film format. There we go, that made sense. Wild. Now this is starring Reese Witherspoon as Cheryl Strayed. And this story is Cheryl after her mother dies and after she cheats on her husband, they get divorced. She goes on an 1100 mile hike through the Pacific Coast, Pacific Crest Trail, sorry. And it's just her experience with this hike, how it changed her life, the people she meets. It's very inspiring. I didn't think I would enjoy it as much as I did, but I enjoyed it a lot more. Reese Witherspoon, Laura Dern, they did fantastic performances. They deserve their Oscar nominations. Mikhail Huseman pleasantly popped in in this. I didn't know he was in this film, and I was watching it. I'm like, oh my god, Mikhail! I love Mikhail Huseman. But he was in there for, for like five minutes, but still awesome. But it's very touching. There are a few moments that make you cringe, but that's to be expected with this kind of film. But mostly it's just this amazing story of resilience and of finding yourself, and it's just worth watching. If you like Dallas Buyers Club, this is by the same director, Jean-Marc Vallée. He is great, and all the actors and actresses are amazing in this, so check it out. Just check it out. Trust me. It's similar to Into the Wild, and it's great. It's great. In the last film, again, just recently saw this, and you're going to be like, why didn't you see this before? The Boondock Saints. Now, the Boondock Saints, do I really have to go into it? Yes. Okay, so it's about these two, I, I can't remember if they're brothers, I'm so bad with this, like, I can't remember if they're brothers, but they're played by Sean Patrick Flannery and Norman Reedus. A very young Norman Reedus, by the way. And, you know, they're assassins. That's basically it. There's a lot of shootouts in this film. There's one character that has Tourette's, and he's funny, okay, he's funny. He says the F word, and stuff just out of nowhere. And it's, it's funny. I know it's offensive, but it's funny. And I really enjoyed it. You know, it's not as great as some people say it is, but it's not terrible. Like, it's cheesy in a good way. Will I watch the second film? I don't know. Because I've heard that's not as good, and it was just so... There's so much distance between those two films, I don't know. But I did enjoy The Boondock Saints for what it was, and I had fun watching it. And I laughed a few times because there are some comedic moments in there among the carnage. So yeah, I would definitely recommend checking it out because, you know, really Norman Reedus and Willem Dafoe are amazing in this film. Sean Patrick Flannery, yeah, he's okay. He's okay. But I enjoyed it for what it was. There's been absolutely no TV whatsoever these past few weeks that I have not already mentioned. So we're going to skip past that section and go to games. Which, actually, this is the, my first time playing this specific game I'm going to mention. But I have the Halo Master Chief Collection. And I'm playing Halo Combat Evolved Anniversary. I love it. I had never played a Halo game before. Okay, I take that back. I played like five minutes of Halo 3 and I didn't understand what was going on because I didn't know the story. So I'm like, I just got, I have to start from the beginning, okay? I finally have this because it was like 20 bucks. And I love Combat Evolved so far. It's really fun. It does look a little dated because, you know, this came out when the original Xbox was launched and this is just an HD remaking of it, but it's still, I mean, it's not that bad looking. It is fun. It's fun. So I'm having a lot of fun with Combat Evolved and I can't wait to play 2, 3, and 4. This does not have ODST or Reach, so I can't experience those, but I'm excited to play the rest of the campaigns and get into the multiplayer because I've never played the multiplayer either, so... Super excited about this. And moving on to music. The music I enjoyed, you know, the past few weeks is in the description box down below. There's 10 songs. Give them a listen. Let me know what you think. And now, moving on to YouTubers for, you know, shout out time. Last part of the video. So, I don't know what this is. What am I doing here? What am I doing? I don't know. So, the first person I'll give a shout out to, and uh, no, I'm totally not checking my notes over here, is um, Novels and Nonsense. Now, as many of you know, I've gotten into watching some booktubers because I am huge into reading right now. And Novels and Nonsense, she does mostly like book hauls and book wrap-ups and stuff. But she also does tags and she does other kinds of videos like favorites and stuff. And I just love her personality. She's really fun to watch. Also, Why Mermaids is another booktuber that has a great personality. Who's also into other aspects of pop culture as well. So they're both very fun ladies to watch on booktube if you're into reading. Uh, next up is Gamer Next Door. Now this is Amelia Tallon and Pamela Horton and they have 
uh, segments where they play video games with YouTubers and other kind of celebrities. And then they have, you know, reviews and events and stuff like that. And it's just really interesting to see. I love Amelia and Pamela. They're just so sweet and beautiful and amazing. And they had my girl Rachel on there recently. So that's how I kind of got started watching the channel. It's a lot of fun if you're into gaming. So yeah, t check out Gamer Next Door if you're into gaming. Uh, I hope I say this right. I've never been sure about this word. Is it Schadenfreude? Schadenfreude? Uh, sh I'm just going to say Schadenfreude Industries. Now this guy, he interviews cosplayers at conventions. And he's interviewed several of my friends. And it's just a lot of fun to watch. He's very fun. He's very charismatic. He asks unique questions. It just to give you an example of who he's interviewed, he's interviewed Rachel Moore, my friend. He's interviewed Jessica Negri, uh, Luna Laney, another uh, cosplayer I know. Um, he's interviewed just so many people, like so many amazing cosplayers. I can't even think like straight right now. But he's interviewed a lot of awesome cosplayers. Even he, he's even interviewed some male cosplayers. So it's just really interesting to see and just to see what he says and asks and does and he has like the signature handshake thing he does with each cosplayer and it's really funny. I love it so check it out if you're into cosplay. And the last one is Worms. I found him through Life in the Awkward Lane and he's just very charming. I love your accent if you're watching this and he does just different kinds of videos and he's just got a great personality and I just adore your videos and your channel because you're an awesome person. So check out all those YouTubers I mentioned. They're all a lot of fun to watch. And yeah this was a pretty short favorites video I know but it's been kind of light these past couple weeks and plus I've been away on vacation and working so it's kind of been like ah time has gone away from me but let me know what your favorites have been so far this month and remember to like the video if you liked it leave a comment down below again saying what you liked favorites of your friends and family can see share me as long as you do it nicely and remember I love each and every one of you so 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 much and did I say subscribe freaking subscribe down below once I get to 1,500 subscribers, there's something special coming, so subscribe. I'm going to go. Peace and kisses. Bye.